I'm going to show you a really cool set of tricks that I don't think you're going to forget. They're really fun and they are useful for the GRE and for the GMAT. There's one that I learned only very recently and I'm going to save that to the end. Divisibility by 11. That is epic. But let's start with divisibility by 3 and 9. Is there a method? Turns out there is for quickly ascertaining whether a number is divisible by three. And I'm also gonna give you different examples of how they might ask that in a question. Is the number, for example, 2,677 divisible by three? How do we find out? What you need to do is sum up the digits of the number and check whether that sum is a multiple of three. It doesn't have to be three itself, just a multiple of three. If that sum of the digits is a multiple of three, then the original number is divisible by three. Let's apply that to 2,677. What is the sum of those digits? Two plus six plus seven plus seven. Doing some quick mental maths, I believe that would be 22. Check if I'm right. If it is 22, 22 is not a multiple of three. That would be 21 or 24. And therefore, 2,677 is not divisible by 3 because 22 is not a multiple of 3. So that's the trick for divisibility by 3. I've also got some great news, as the writing in blue down below indicates. It's the exact same trick for 9. You add up the digits. Is the answer a multiple of 9? Then the original number is a multiple of 9. Exact same trick with three as with nine, respectively. Let's do a couple of examples then. Is three a factor of 34,568? Notice I phrased it differently. It's not, is the number a multiple of three? Just a different phrasing, it means the same thing though. If three is a factor of 34,568, it means is that number a multiple of three? Is three one of the ingredients of that number? Is 34,568 divisible by three? Do you want to try this one? Adding up the digits, that would be some quick mental maths here, 12, 18, 26. Unfortunately, again, because 26 is not a multiple of three, that number is not divisible by three. So three is not a factor of that number. Let's try the next one. Is 42,139 a multiple of nine? Exact same trick as with three. You add up the digits and check if it's a multiple of nine. Plus one is nine, plus three is 12, plus nine is 21. So that number is not a multiple of nine because 21 is not a multiple of nine. Don't worry, we are gonna see examples where it is divisible. I just thought I'd test it out on numbers which are not necessarily divisible. If 42,139 had added up to 27, its digits, then it would be a multiple of nine. So that's a trick for divisibility by three and by nine. Add up the digits and check whether it's a multiple of three or nine respectively. Now I want to move on to divisibility by six, which is intimately related to divisibility by three. You might even be able to guess the trick. To find out if a number is divisible by six, you'd first have to check if it's divisible by three and then check if it's even. If it's divisible by three, three's a factor. And if it's even, two's a factor. And if both three and two are factors, then six must be a factor. It must be divisible by six. And that's the trick. We use the same trick we just saw to find out if the number's divisible by three. And then you just check the last digit to see whether it's an even number or not. If it's even and divisible by three, it's divisible by six, guaranteed. What about this number? Seven plus five is 12, plus six is 18, plus four is 22. So unfortunately, that number is not divisible by six. It is an even number, great, but it's not divisible by three because 22 is not a multiple of three. Soon, I guarantee you, we're gonna to get to an example where it will work, but I just wanted to show you some examples where it doesn't work. Finding out that a number is not divisible by six is also useful in the GRE and the GMAT, of course. I've just told you that rule, so let's get on to some examples. Is six a factor of 207,702? If you want, pause the video, try and work this one out. Notice, again, I've phrased the question slightly differently. 
asking whether 6 was a factor, but it's the same thing. Is it divisible by 6? Adding up the digits of 207,702, we get, I believe, 18. Now, 18 is a multiple of 3. Therefore, we know that big chunky number is divisible by 3. And we also know it's even because its last digit is 2. So therefore, we can quickly say that 6 is a factor of that massive number. Notice we didn't have to long divide by 6, none of those shenanigans. Straight to the answer. This is epic. Let's do another example. Divisibility by 4. This is an interesting one, different from the tricks we've seen before. And what makes it different is you don't have to add up the digits. None of that. No. What you do is you just check the last two digits. I bet you're thinking, it can't be that easy. Philip must have gone crazy. No, to check if a number is divisible by 4, all you need to do is check whether the last two digits of that number form a number that is a multiple of 4. That kind of sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Just look at the last two numbers, the last two digits in that huge number, 263,748. What are the last two digits? 4 and 8. That forms the number 48. Is 48 a multiple of 4? Yes, 48 is a multiple of 4. And therefore, that entire number is divisible by 4. Some of you are thinking, how can we know for sure that the entire number is divisible by 4 just by checking the last two digits? Well, if you're curious, you don't really need to know this, but it's because the hundreds digit, because 100 is a multiple of 4, is guaranteed to be divisible by 4. And the thousands digit, because 1000 is a multiple of 4, is guaranteed, etc. So all the other digits, from the hundreds to the thousands, the ten thousands, are guaranteed to be multiples of 4. So really, we only have to check the last two digits. And here, in this number, we only have to check the number 48. We're not adding up 4 and 8, like the previous tricks, we're just looking at the number 48. Because 48 is a multiple of 4, then that entire number is divisible by 4, is a multiple of 4. Got to admit, that's pretty epic. I'm saving the most epic for the last one, but let's do a couple of examples first. Is that crazy number divisible by x squared if x is minus 2? Some of you will be looking at that and going, why did Philip suddenly make it so hard? Where did the x come from? A key skill for the GMAT and GRE is to learn not to be intimidated by x's or negative numbers. It might look like a complicated question, but it's actually asking something quite simple, something you've already learned. If x is minus 2, what is x squared? Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. I hope you didn't say minus 4. Minus 2 squared is 4. So the actual question is, is 6,792,428 divisible by 4? And can you tell me if it is? It is divisible by 4 because look at the last two digits. 28. 28 is a multiple of 4 and therefore the entire number is definitely divisible by 4, a multiple of 4. All we have to do is check the last two digits. Not sum them up, just do they form a number that is a multiple of 4. And how much time was saved? No long division at all. Right, I have saved the best or last. You are going to go absolutely crazy when you see this one. Divisibility by 11. I've written both questions there. That last one is the tour de force, the arc de triomphe of uh, divisibility questions. So, is the number 54,879 divisible by 11? And yes, again, we can skip all the long division. You have to pay extra attention to this one because it's not quite as simple as the previous tricks, but truly awesome and something you can tell people in parties and stuff. What you do is you start with the first number on the left, and then you subtract the next number along. And then you add the next number after that, subtract the next number after that, add the next number after that, subtract, add, subtract, add, all the way to the end, starting with subtraction. The answer you get, if it's a multiple of 11, then the original number is divisible by 11. Or said more formally, the trick is starting from the left, Alternately, subtract, then add each digit of the number until you reach the end. If the result, positive or negative, is a multiple of 11, the original number is a multiple of 11. Let's answer that first question then. If you want, if you feel confident already, you can try yourself by pausing. 
or you can watch me do the first one and then maybe try yourself the last one, the ultimate one. So for our number at the top, 54,879, we do five, take away, subtract four, that's one, add eight, that's nine, take away seven, that's two, plus nine, that's 11. So because it added up to a multiple of 11, that number is indeed divisible by 11. If it had added up to 12, after we did the subtract, add, subtract, add, subtract, add, then it wouldn't be divisible by 11. But it added up to 11, so it works. Do you see how this trick is different from the others? There's subtraction and then adding. And you start with subtract, it's not just adding all the way along. What about the last one? This one, I'd find it really fun if you tried because it combines virtually everything we've learned in this one video. Take your time, give yourself a couple of minutes to answer this one. And while this isn't a super common topic on a GRE or GMAT, I've seen it come up many, many times. Okay, if you've had a go, or you just want to see me do it, let's get into it. Is that epic number 5,400,000 and something divisible by 66? To answer that, we'd have to think about 66 in a little bit more depth. What is 66? What are its prime factors? What are its ingredients? Well, breaking down 66, 66 is 6 times 11. And if therefore that 5 million number is divisible by 6, and it's divisible by 11, then we know for sure combined it's divisible by 66. So we're going to check if it's divisible by 6 using our earlier tricks check if it's divisible by 11 using our latest trick. And if it's divisible by both six and 11, it's definitely divisible by 66. This is some truly epic maths going on right now, live. Well, pre-recorded, but you know, close enough. Okay, is it divisible by six? To be divisible by six, it has to be an even number. Tick, it is an even number. It ends in a two, this epic number. So it is an even. Is it divisible by three? Let's add up the digits. 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 6 is 15, plus 1 is 16, plus 3 is 19, plus 0 is 19, plus 2 is 21. 21 is a multiple of 3. So finally, we got an example where it works. Because 21 is a multiple of 3, that number is divisible by 3. And we already know it's divisible by 2 because it's even. Therefore, combined, it's divisible by 3 and divisible by 2. Therefore, it's divisible by 6. So... First box is ticked. It's definitely divisible by six. Now the question is, is it divisible by 11? Well, let's use our trick. We do the first number, subtract the second number. So five take away four is one. Add the next number, six, so we get to seven. Take away one, get to six, plus three, nine. Take away zero, nine, add to 11. And 11 is of course a multiple of 11. By the way, it doesn't always have to be 11. It could be 22, 44, minus 33. Any multiple of 11 works. Anyway, we did our trick. It was a multiple of 11 and therefore it is divisible by 11. And we already know it's divisible by six. So combined, yes, that number 5,461,302 is definitely divisible by 66. And there was not a single moment of long division. If you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and see you in the next one.